All right, of course, and you know, we're going to be talking about GCP for medical devices. So knowing that ICHE6, R2, and R1 were written specifically for pharmaceuticals, we also know that they're a good scientific and ethical standard that is an underpinning for how we conduct human subject research. We as device manufacturers or sponsors or working within the device realm, we use ICHE6 as one of our levels of GCP, if you will. But ISO 14155 was written to complement that, to be the GCP specific for medical devices. And we're going to compare and contrast those. Now, because ISO 14155 is a licensed product, we can't provide you with that, but we're going to give you some information comparing and contrasting strongly, encouraging you, if you don't already have access to it, to do that. And we're going to talk about how each level in the hierarchy of GCP helps strengthen the net, the tensile strength of the net that we build around our subjects and our data. So we're going to see where ISO and ICH complement each other and, you know, sometimes they're identical mm -hmm. and other times ISO will step in and say, we're going to talk about some things that you don't hear in ICH. When we step out to do these studies, we want to make sure we're required by regulations, rather, to ensure that we are giving investigators all the information they need to properly conduct the study, that we have qualified and trained monitors. So we are looking at the training that's being provided, when it's being provided, how it's being provided. It is not uncommon. I'm an auditor. So it is certainly not uncommon, unfortunately, to see where inappropriate training is being provided or seeing where protocols require individuals who are involved in the study to perform tasks for which they're not trained, or a protocol might require us to follow ISO 14155. And then when we go to look and ask about training on ISO 14155 or look for documentation of ISO 14155, we find that the sponsor says, well, you know, we didn't have that because we didn't want to pay for it for everyone. But we put it in our protocol that we're going to follow it because that sounds good, right? So let's talk about that practical application and implementation of using these guides. We have the regulations, certainly, for, for our purposes from FDA perspective, 21 CFR, 11, 50, 54, 56, 812. And we have these guidelines. You know, those of you working outside the U.S., we have all of those regulatory requirements and directives and, and um, things that we need to be mindful of. We can conduct a device study outside of the U.S. as an IDE study, in which case we're going to be responsible for everything, right? everything that the FDA requires plus everything our country of study requires. So this is me. I've been doing this for quite some time. I've been very fortunate to get an opportunity to work domestically, internationally, working with sponsors and CROs and investigators and academic medical centers and IRBs and labs, getting a sense of how others are taking these regulations and guidelines and implementing them. It's always fascinating. So what we're going to talk about, we'll talk about the purpose and governing bodies of ICH and ISO. We'll look at the core principles of each document, and we'll look at additional sources of information that we can access to help us smooth that path toward compliance. I'm a firm believer that regardless of what our role is in clinical research, we all have a common goal. We all have a common client, if you will, and that is the public's health. So everything that we do is meant towards ultimately getting a product out there that's safe and effective to enhance standard of care. Our product is good data from protected subjects, regardless of what your investigational product is. ISO and ICH, as I said, build into that safety net around our participants and our data. Everything that we can do, and we might supplement this certainly with SOPs as well, building up, and up on that hierarchy of GCP, state and local laws. Those of you I know that are in some states where we have those laws as well. So what about ISO? It's a worldwide federation of national standards and bodies, and we know that you know, a lot of folks are ISO 9001 certified, looking at quality systems. We have 
ISO 19011 for us for internal audits. So there are a lot of things that we can translate from ISO, even from other quality elements in manufacturing, into clinical research. So ISO 14155 started out years ago as parts one and two, and then we had our updates throughout time. The latest update is from 2020, and it has been adopted as an American national standard, and of course, global as well. ISO 14155 is Clinical Investigation of Medical Devices for Human Subjects, Good Clinical Practice. We'll talk about ICH here in a moment. Let me clear this, and first let me ask you, how many of you within your organization are using ISO 14155 and you have access to the most current version? Can you give me a green check, please, and a red X if not? Okay, so many of you do. I don't see anybody so far that doesn't have access to it. All right. So hopefully you've had an opportunity to review it because this particular standard addresses good clinical practice for, just like we see with ICH, designing, conducting, recording, and reporting clinical investigations in a human subject population. 